In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a BlockX node using Node Orbit. There's a few things that you're going to need before you get started. We're going to be doing this on Windows 10, but it'll work on Windows 10 or 11. We'll be installing the BlockX wallet. If you do have Linux available, uh, the Linux wallet is definitely more secure, so you can go ahead and proceed with that if you're comfortable with it. The next thing that you're going to need to do is create an account with Node Orbit. I'll make sure I link that in the description below. And you're also going to need the collateral for a BlockX node. The collateral for a BlockX node is going to be 100,000 BlockX. You're also going to need a little bit extra for transaction fees. So I added an extra 25 BlockX. So that's what you need to get started. Let's get to it. All right, so the first step to get started here is install the BlockX wallet. So I'm just going to go over to my desktop and we're going to go to the homepage for BlockX. Uh, and here we are. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down a little bit over here and we have all the downloads available for the BlockX wallet. Uh, as you can see, they have a Windows version, a Mac version, and a Linux version. We're going to be doing this on Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the download button right over here, and it's going to download on my PC. I'll go ahead and open that up. Okay, and here is the folder. I'm going to go ahead and extract all the contents in it. The folder that I'm going to be extracting it is the folder that I'm going to be saving and executing it from. All right, so we're going to right click on the zip file. I'm going to say extract all the location that it's going to be extracting everything is a folder that we're going to be running it from. Uh, so I'm okay with it being in my documents folder. I'm going to go ahead and select that and then click on extract. And we have it right over here. Just going to close out of this window. And we have the block X QT file, which is executable. We just have to double click on that to open it up. And we're going to get this windows protect message. You can click on more info and then run anyway. And now what it's going to be doing is downloading uh, a copy of the blockchain. You want to make sure that you have enough space on this. Uh, definitely a couple of gigs is going to be required. Uh, we can use a default directory or we can specify which folder we want it in. So the first thing I got was this firewall message. I just have to click on allow access and now I have an appearance window. So we can select a dark or light theme. I like dark theme. I'm going to be leaving it as that. And then font family, the font and everything else I'm going to leave as default. Click on OK. So this is the core wallet. And you can see that it is going to be syncing with the blockchain and then going ahead and downloading a copy of it. You can see that there is the number of blocks left. So we have to let this all count down. Once your wallet has been synced up, the next two things that you want to make sure that you do is back up your wallet and encrypt it. To encrypt it, you can go to the settings menu up here at the top and then go to encrypt wallet. Over here is where you can enter in a passphrase or a password. And to back up your wallet, you just go to the file menu and then select backup wallet. This is where you can save the wallet.dat file. This is the main file that you're gonna need if you need to restore your wallet in the future. So make sure you save this in a safe location. Uh, so I have a zero balance of BlockX right now. Okay, so I have to still send my BlockX to my wallet now that it's fully synced. And what I wanna do is take it off the exchange where I purchased it. In this example, um, the exchange I'm using is ZegZeg. Zeg. There's a few other exchanges that accept BlockX. I'll link them in the description below. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a withdraw from my account and I'm going to be sending the BlockX that I purchased to the BlockX wallet. So in here, I'm going to go under receive and I'm just going to call this one deposit. It's going to click on request payment and then it's going to give me an address. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this address. So the collateral for a BlockX node is going to be 100,000. You also want to give yourself just a couple extra on top of that to cover the transaction fees. The transaction fees on the BlockX chain is extremely low, but you should still have something a little above and beyond that. Uh, during the test transactions, you're going to need five block X. And I'm just going to send about 25 block X over right now. Okay, so I just sent the 25 over. I'm going to go into my overview screen and you're going to see uh, it populate here in just a few moments. So the 25 block X I have sent myself is right over here. You can see it just came in. Okay, and now that we have our balance, we can go ahead and begin with step one. Now that the wallet is set up, we're going to be configuring our master node. We're going to be using the official documentation to set this up. We're going to go up here. To the tools menu and then we're going to go to the debug console and here is our debug console now i'm going to open up a notepad here uh, just so i can keep a list of the addresses that i'm going to be creating because there's going to be a lot of copying and pasting going on i'm going to be using this again just as a reference so i can just log where everything is so uh, the first thing that we're going to be doing is getting a new address and we're going to type in get new address and that's going to give us an output so we're going to copy this and this one is going to be for the master node fees. So now I'm going to go and close out of this window. And, and the next step, which is step three is we're going to go into the send window 
and we're going to be sending a payment to ourselves. So the address that we're going to be sending it is the master node fee address. I'm going to go ahead and paste that address in here. And we're going to be in the amount section, we're going to be sending five block X, and then we can go ahead and click on send and then we can click on yes. Okay, there we go. Here is our payment to ourself. We're actually waiting for four blocks to be confirmed. Uh, if you put your mouse over here, it'll let you know how many confirmations are in. So it's been unconfirmed, but it'll do a count and we're waiting for four before we can go on to the next step. So I'll just give it a minute and I'll let that happen. There we go. So we have five confirmations. We only needed four to go to the next step. That is now taking place. So we're good to go to the next step, which is gonna be going back up to the tools menu and then debug console. And now what we wanna do is get a new address again, hit enter. And this address is gonna be for our master node collateral. So I'm gonna be putting in another line here. This is master node collateral. I'm gonna copy this address and I'm gonna paste it in here. We're gonna be referring to these addresses later. So we're gonna go out of this window. We're gonna get out of the console. So the collateral for the node is going to be 100,000. Uh, we've done the test transaction, everything looks good. Uh, you can do this all in one shot. You can send all the uh, block X into your wallet in one shot. Uh, I'm now going to send the total amount that I require for my node, which is going to be 100,000. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. It's the next day and uh, just letting you know that I ran into a little bit of an issue with ZegZeg. Uh, they have a maximum withdrawal limit at $5,000 if you don't KYC. This account that I'm using is not KYC. So I had to do the transaction over the course of two days. And now I have the full amount, which is the collateral listed in here, which is 100,000 block X. Okay, so now we can continue uh, with this collateral address that we just created. Uh, we're gonna be sending the total amount, which is gonna be 100,000 block X into it. Uh, what we're gonna do is go over to our wallet, click on the send window. I'm gonna highlight this address. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it in there. So that's the address that I'm gonna be sending it to. Uh, that is the master node collateral address that I've pasted it in here. And now what I'm gonna be doing is putting in the amount. The amount is gonna be 100,000, that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and we're gonna send it. So we're sending it to ourselves, we're sending it to our collateral address. Uh, then I'm gonna click on yes over here. And that amount will be sent to myself. In the transaction window right over here, you can see payment to yourself. So it's unconfirmed right now. We need to make sure that it's confirmed by four blocks. That might take a few minutes. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, so now we have more than four confirmations. So we're gonna go back up to tools and then to our debug console. And inside the debug console, we're gonna be typing in master nodes outputs right over here and then hit enter. And we're gonna get a line over here and there's either gonna be a one or a zero. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm just gonna be taking this section right over here and I'm gonna paste it in my notepad. I'm gonna be referring to it later. Just wanna make sure it's easily accessible. Back at the console window, we're gonna be doing the BLS generate command. Go ahead and enter that in. And it's gonna give us two keys. One's gonna be private, one's gonna be public. Once again, I'm just gonna be taking this information, I'm gonna highlight this, copy it, and I'm gonna paste it in my notepad. Now this is important. The line that says secret is the one that you're gonna be using when you register with Node Orbit. You wanna highlight that and keep it aside because we're gonna need that at the very end. And moving on to step number eight. And the next thing we're going to be doing is generating a few more addresses. I'm going to be typing in the get new address command, hit enter. And this one is going to be the owner of the master node address. I'm going to paste that one in. And then we're going to need another address for proposal voting. So once again, I'll be typing in get new address, copy that over and paste it in here. And we're going to need one more address. And this one's going to be for master node rewards. Get new address. All right. I'm going to copy that and I will paste it over here. So I have a list of all the addresses I'm going to have to refer to later. And for step nine, we're going to be doing the Protex registration command. And here is the Protex registration command. I'm going to be pasting this in the description below as well as linking it to my blog with a breakdown because I know this part can get a little bit confusing. Anything that is capitalized, we're going to be pasting over. You also want to make sure in between each segment that there's only one space. You don't want to have multiple spaces and the IP address is gonna be the IP address that's been assigned to you by Node Orbit. The port number, it's 12972. This is the standard port number for BlockX. We're gonna be leaving that the way it is. And then we have the owner address, the public address, the proposal voting address. Um, we have this number zero. Now, very important to note that this number zero is between the proposal voting and the master node reward. There's a space on each side 
If this zero is not here, it's going to fail. It's important to see this. I missed this a couple of times when I was setting this up. That's why I'm pointing it out. And then we have the master node reward and the master node feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be pasting these in. These addresses that I have right over here are made up. Uh, they don't mean anything, so please don't use any of them. Okay, so we have master node outputs. So if we scroll down over here with our master, with our master node outputs command, we've got a very long digit, which is this right over here. So I'm gonna copy that. We're staying inside the quotations. We're not using anything outside of it. We're gonna go back up here at the top. I'm gonna to paste it in. And then it says digit. Now this digit uh, is gonna be right over here. It's a one in my case. This could be a one or a zero. So you gotta know which one you have. Then you're just gonna go over this and I'm just gonna put in a one. So there's one space on this side, one space on this side, and we have the digit in the center. And next is gonna be your IP address. Uh, you're gonna put in whatever IP address has been assigned to you. I'm just gonna put in a generic address. And then we have the owner address. So we're gonna go over to our text file and then we have the owner address right over here. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna paste it in. Okay, we have the public address, which is next. We have to scroll down over here to the master node outputs and we have this public address right over here. We're gonna be copying it. It is very long. We're gonna copy it, making sure that we don't copy the quotations, just the text inside. Then we're gonna go back up here to the top where it says public address and we're gonna paste that in. Then we have the proposal voting address, which is gonna be this one right over here. I'm gonna highlight that, I'm gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna paste it. Okay, great. And then there's a space, we have this zero. Make sure the zero is here. Then there's another space. And then we have the master node reward. So I'm gonna go and copy this master node reward address back over here and I'll paste it in. And then master node fee, I'm going to highlight the master node fee address. I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna paste it in. Once you have this done, I would save this text file. Uh, you might have to refer to it later because there are errors that come up if you don't have it exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it over to my debug console and I'm gonna paste it in and then hit enter. And then we get an output. So this output is actually gonna be important. I'm gonna be copying this section right over here. And I'm going to then paste it out down here below. This is, this is fun. So I'm gonna, I pasted it all out over here. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is sign the message. To sign the message, I'm gonna be using this template. Again, everything in here is made up. Uh, we have the first section, which is going to be collateral address. Okay, so we're gonna get the collateral address right down over here. I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna be pasting it in over here. We have a quotation at the beginning and a quotation at the end. The next is sign message. Sign message we're gonna find down here at the bottom. Uh, we're gonna be copying everything in the quotation. It's a very long string, uh, so we're just gonna copy that and then and we'll paste it. And you can see that we only have one quotation at the beginning and one at the end. So now we can highlight this, we can copy it, and we're ready to paste it into our debug console. Okay, and inside the debug console, I'm gonna paste it in, and then I'm gonna hit enter. And it's gonna output some gibberish code right over here. We're gonna highlight this. We're actually gonna need this because that is gonna be the last part that we need to get our node online. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna paste that in. Step 11 is gonna be the ProTX register submit. And I have this template right over here for the ProTX register submit. Uh, you can see that we need the TX value from the ProTX register prepare file, which is right over here. So we have the TX, and then we have this long alphanumeric value that we're gonna be highlighting. We're staying within the quotations. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna bring it back over here. And I'm gonna highlight this entire section we're actually gonna be removing the quotations this time when we paste it in. So we're gonna paste it in here. There's no quotations, but there is a space at the end. And then we need the output from the sign message. Okay, so the output from the sign message, we're gonna go over here to the sign message. And this was the output that we had just received. So I'm gonna copy this and and then I'm gonna paste it in here. There is one space in between the first string and the second string that we have over here. Then we're gonna highlight this entire section, including the ProTX register submit. So we're gonna copy this, and then we're gonna jump back over to the debug console. I'm gonna go back to my debug console, and I'm gonna paste it in, and then I'm gonna hit enter. So now we're gonna jump over to no orbit and select the BlockX account that we created. When we click on this update link right over here, it's gonna take us to an area where we can enter in a key. 
This is going to be the secret key from step seven when we entered in the BLS generate command. So you want to go ahead and paste that in here and click on the update button. And that's how you get your node up and running on Nord Orbit. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.